So the first is data. Um, and we see here that there's a potential for China to have a massive lead on the US when it comes to data used for AI training. Uh, we just look at recent news at $1.5 billion settlement that Anthropic made for copyright, um, uh, accusations of copyright violation and using stolen content. Uh, and then we've got China where they have the ability to override such concerns for national interest. Um, sure, there's no silver bullets. They've had a lot of efforts to make central data exchanges work that you know, have faced a lot of complications, but they may have the ability to unlock vast traits of data that are otherwise inhibited by, from being used in the US ecosystem. Uh, the second key area Sam touched on is talent. Um, yes, AI labs have been the most attractive workplaces for AI talent globally to date, but there has been a shift in receptiveness in the US to international students coming here. And, and China really does have strong talent pools. And we just have to look at DeepSeek, um, the AI startup in China that did an incredible job at optimizing on low amounts of compute for incredibly capable models. Um, so I think talent is another area where the US could easily cede advantage to China. Um, Energy for me is a really big one. So if you look at large scale AI training and deployment at scale, um, some of the studies are saying that we need between five to eight gigawatts of new energy capacity for a training run, a single advanced AI model being trained by 2030. And to put that in perspective, I think a regular nuclear power plant makes about one gigawatt. So we're looking at five to eight of those by 2030 in demand in order to have this rapid growth in AI potential in the US. And so the Trump administration has take, taken pretty strong action on this. They've, they've done some permitting reform as much as they can with executive action. They've taken a whack at it, but there's no silver bullet. And let's put it in perspective, last year, China introduced about 400 gigawatts of new power compared to just dozens in the US. So there's another area where we're probably going to see some kind of um, advantage to China. Um, robotics, an example where China is way ahead of where US capability is at and an area where we are playing massive catch up. And so then we come to compute, which is like the fifth thing I think about. And that is the area where the US has a really clearly defined lead. Um, with partners, it can, the US controls the supply chain for specialized chips and infrastructure. Um, that's where the competitive edge is, is. And moreover, if you look at how compute is used throughout the AI supply chain, so the more compute you have, the more capable base models you can train. The more compute you have, the better you can enhance those models for specific use cases. The more compute you have, the more you can let a model think over longer timeframes to get better results. And that means the more compute you have, the more experimentation you can do to design the next algorithms for the new generation of AI models.